Hey folks, on Monday morning we saw a chart like this one, where a bearish reversal pattern appeared on the weekly chart. Today the price has already fallen below $40,000, while the buyers are trying to hold that critical level. But there is reason to believe that the rate could go even lower, to 38 or even 36,000. There is even a prediction that we might see a Bitcoin at $30,000 this summer. In this video, I will tell you what the grounds for this are. We'll discuss the current market situation and break down the forecast from Arthur Hayes, who used to be the head of the BitMEX crypto exchange. He decided to predict Bitcoin price behavior based on macro factors, such as the tightening of monetary policy in the US, the Chinese debt crisis and more. All the details are in this video. Be sure to like it and click subscribe if this is your first time on the channel. Your support is the best. If we talk about the current Bitcoin decline, it's not dictated by any factors related to the cryptocurrency market. The development of the industry is in full swing. Exchanges are entering new markets. Hash rate capacity is almost at its all-time high. More and more companies and countries are considering Bitcoin investments and payments in the first cryptocurrency. The cryptocurrency industry will get even more acceptance, and it's only a matter of time. Based on the changing opinions of billionaires regarding cryptocurrencies, here is one. This is David Rubenstein, co-founder of investment company Carlyle Group, whose capital is $4.1 billion. He was previously critical of cryptocurrencies. Now, he thinks the following. I didn't buy cryptocurrencies, but I did buy companies that serve the industry because I think the genie is out of the bottle. I don't think the industry is going away anytime soon. And he also believes that a generation of young people is utterly disrespectful of fiat currencies. Here are his words. It's clear that many young people don't think that the dollar, the euro or other currencies are based on anything serious. So you can see that overall we're doing well, but prices are falling, and the problem is that the market continues to work out the correction in risky assets. We're talking about stocks and cryptocurrencies. The logic is simple. If inflation continues to rise, especially if the growth rate is high, the Fed may take even stricter measures in monetary policy. The market is already putting these fears into the stock price, especially in anticipation of the Fed meeting on May the 4th, at which they are supposed to raise the rate and start selling assets off the balance sheet. It's also possible for the opposite to happen, where stocks will go up and help support the Bitcoin price. The inflation data should be lower than the month before, or its growth rate should be insignificant. But we should understand that it'll only be a temporary respite because there are no powerful drivers for growth in today's stock or cryptocurrency market. But unfortunately, these are enough reasons for the fall. And now, moving on to the forecast of Arthur Hayes, which we will analyze in full detail. Right away, let's have a look at some figures. In June, Arthur Hayes expects the Bitcoin price to decrease to $30,000, and he calls the price of Ethereum at $2,500. If you calculate, it's a drop of 25% for Bitcoin and 15% for Ethereum. But this violates the logic of the crypto market because altcoins always fall more than Bitcoin in percentage terms. But maybe Hayes means that in June, the transition process to the POS algorithm may start, which may support the price of the top two cryptocurrencies. By the way, I'm planning to make a video about Ether, where we will analyze its price prediction for the summer. There are a lot of opinions and news on this topic now, so I believe it's worth understanding. Whoever's in favor of such a review, give me a thumbs up, please. So what are the reasons why Arthur Hayes thinks Bitcoin will drop? As he sees it, markets are cyclical and in a downturn, but we haven't yet reached the bottom. He cites data on closely correlated high-tech stocks and Bitcoin and Ethereum prices, so when stocks fall, Cryptocurrencies will follow when the stock market, in turn, is now under significant threat because of the Fed's future actions. We're talking about the fact that they can no longer print dollars and they have to raise the rates and start selling assets of their balance sheet. Are there those who could buy out the fall instead of the Fed? China and Japan would do well to be such saviors of the world from the financial crisis. But not this time. 
Today, China has big internal economic problems exacerbated by constant lockdowns to fight the coronavirus. China shows a so-called zero tolerance for the coronavirus and can shut down an entire region because of a few dozen sick people. This in turn hits the country's economy and the rest of the world since China is where most goods are produced. But this is just an ongoing problem. The main problem is that China's economy is essentially a giant dead bubble. They made a big bet on domestic consumption growth, which was stimulated by cheap loans. As a result, the country has whole urban areas with empty apartments. The developers built on credit, people bought on credit, when in fact, they didn't need them. There's lots of debt, and this chart shows that China isn't gonna increase its own debt load to save the US economy from recession. As for Japan, they've already started working to save the US market. The yen is getting cheaper, the printing press is working, and a buyback of US bonds is likely underway. Under the most significant threat, US stocks of high-tech companies may also be subject to buyback. But there's one problem here. Japan's economy is insufficient to save the US from the devastating consequences of the Fed's action. An additional factor in the collapse is the war in Ukraine. Because this armed conflict means a problem with energy, food and logistics. Arthur Hayes notes that Europe has found itself in a difficult situation, where politicians are forced on the one hand to oppose Russia and on the other to seek a balance so that inflation in their countries doesn't get out of control. He doesn't see a possible quick end to the war when sanctions are lifted from Russia and normal trade relations are restored. The crisis will only worsen, which means that the European economy won't come to the aid of the United States. Hayes points out that this is his analysis and he may be wrong, but for now, all odds are that stocks will fall and inevitably take cryptocurrencies with them to the bottom. He's unhappy because he's already started gaining a position in some altcoins. After all, their price seems to be very cheap today, but he's ready for a possible fall and additionally hedges his risks with options. He considers the main threat to his forecast to be the falling correlation between stocks and Bitcoin. It's at its maximum right now, but maybe something will change. Guys, this is Arthur Hayes' picture of the world. We'll soon find out if he is right or wrong. There isn't much time left till June. I'd appreciate your support. Subscribe and ring the bell, please. Thanks for watching. Your Coin Post.